Hello dear guys, welcome to my video. Uh, I am going to represent an inventory management app which I have created using Redis database and Flask as its backend and React as its frontend. So it is an inventory management app for a hypothetical shop hardware house that uses Redis as its primary database. So this is the repository of my project. So let's head over to the architecture the hardware house app architecture. So let's start from the React frontend. So whenever the browser is open and the application is started from the frontend, the React makes the get request, which gets all the products. This get request is sent to the Flask backend. Flask backend manages fetch all products and gets the products from the Redis database, builds an array, uh, in descending order and then sends this array to the React frontend. Similarly, for the post request, when the React frontend sends the post request, it manages the post request via create product function and saves that product in the Redis database. All these storage data can be seen from the Redis insight. So let's install the app and use it and then view the demo. So these are the products table screenshots. Uh, you can see them uh, while viewing my repository. Now let's head over to the installation of this app. So for this app you need to have a Python, Docker and Node.js. Let's clone this repository over here. So I have cloned the repository. Now let's start the server. So to start the server, we have to go to hardware house inventory folder. Let's open this with VS code. Now we can see the installation guide from this readme file. So first we have to get the Redis image. So for that we will write docker compose up minus d. Make sure your docker is up and running. So the container has been started. We can see the container. So this hardware house inventory container is started. Now let's create the virtual environment. So the virtual environment has been created. Let's activate this environment. I'm activating this environment for PowerShell. Now let's install all the dependencies. Now, as you can see, all the dependencies have been installed. Let's run the server. Flask run. So as you can see, the server is started and running. Now let's go to the Redis Insight. So as we can see, Redis Insight is now running. Now to load some sample data, we can run the script python products loader. So some products are stored in the uh, database. Now we can view them through Redis Insight. As you can see, some of the data is stored like mechanical keyboard, description, built for extensive typing price, units, lower limit stock, and the timestamp. Now we can close this window. Now the server is up and running. Now let's start the front end. So to start the front end, just we have to write npm install. 
So to run the client side, we have to write npm install, then npm run start, right? npm run start or npm start. So as you can see, the app is up and running. So this is the structure of the app. You can update any product, delete the product and the products with lower stock limit will be shown on this table and all the total products aggregate cost of all the products and the stock control percentage is displayed over here. Now let's delete all the products so now no products to display uh, as we have deleted from the front end we can see on the redis inside that now no product is stored in the database now let's analyze how the workflow is running so now let's create new product smartphone Brand new smartphone size 15,000 units 25 lower stock limit 10. Now let's add the product and you can see the product has been added and all the total product aggregate cost and the stock control is running. Now let's see the radius insight. Is the data coming? The data is here and it is stored in the Redis database. We can see from the Redis insight. Now let's add one more product with the units less than lower stock limit. Let's add the product. Now you can see the products with lower stock limit. Smart TV is added over here as well as here. You can see in the Redis insight, another product is added. Now let's update the product smartphone we can uh, decrease the units from 25 to 5 and the smartphone will also come under the products with lower stock limit category let's see if it is updated now we can see that the smartphone with units 5 is updated now let's view how the data is stored and accessed. So when I refresh this website, the get request is triggered from the front end to the Flask backend. And this get request is managed by fetch all products. This fetch all products finds the products, all the products and sort by the uh, timestamp in descending order and then build the results into an array and then sends this array to the react front end. Over here. And then if we make the post request such as adding a new product like RGB keyboard. Now let's add this product. Now the RGB keyboard has been added. When I click on the add product, the post request is triggered and this post request is managed by the products new create product function in the flask which saves the product after some validation and returns the new product key to the react front end. This front end initiated the post request and it received the key that is displayed over here. Now let's see the product schema. So in the product schema, I have made product name, product description, price, units, lower limit stock and timestamp with different data types. And I have uh, inherited the JSON model in the products class. Hope you like the video. Thank you.